no trip. Um, everything went well, it was all good. Um, my Jeep sat all night, overnight, and fired right up cold in the morning. And we got probably 10 inches of snow overnight, and it was in the probably high 20s. So as far as the battery and charging system were concerned, it was fine. Um, I drove all the way out that next day, gauges were fine, everything was acting the way it was supposed to, lights were all working. Um, I got out, we aired up, uh, so we got from O'Leary Lake and we went down and we got down to the 46, and so we're on the, the Estacada side of the pass, um, so rather than go up all the way over the top and then all the way down to Detroit, uh, we decided we'd go ahead and air up there, so we aired up there and headed up over the top of the pass. Um, this is the only thing that happened. Um, so I got up to the top and there was like a snowy area that was kind of rutted out and all messed up from where some tow rigs were parked off to the side and I ended up slipping down kind of in the ditch and because I was fully aired up and fully linked up with my sway bar it took me giving some pepper back and forth before I could get out so I, I gave it some RPM and didn't bounce or hit nothing real hard I didn't snake anything so I thought and um, anyway we got down to the bottom and the boys stopped at the gas station and I tooled out and headed down Highway 22 back towards Salem. Um, I got probably the Mill City area and I looked down and I had no tachometer gauge, I had no speedometer gauge, my airbag light was on, my check engine light was on, and I also had a no bus um, indication on my odometer. So I'll insert some pictures here so you can see what I was working with. So I immediately thought, well, I must have lost my ECU. Um, so, but my question was, is if, you know, as I'm driving down the road, obviously, well, um, I'm like, well, okay, well, if the ECU is dead, then how come my engine's still running? It's fully fuel injected and it's OBD2. Maybe it's got a default program. So when you turn the key on, maybe it loads a default program that stores them in a RAM rather than on a program or on a uh, CPU rather. So maybe it's stored on a RAM like a computer, and then when you turn the key off, the RAM loses the signal or loses the program. That's my assumption. Um, I do have a torque flight reader that I keep in the Jeep all the time, so I immediately pulled my phone out and tried to get a reading from the CPU to my phone to see what the check engine light was about. My phone and my ECU couldn't talk to each other. Um, so immediately I went back to, okay, well my ECU's gotta be dead. Um, am I gonna stop? and shut my Jeep off to find out. It's still running. I still got gas to get home. I'm mapping at home. So I ignored the fact that I had no gauges. I ignored the fact that I had no speedometer. I kept an eye on the GPS for my speed and I had good oil pressure. I had good voltage. I had good water temperature. I had everything else was good. So I booked it for home. Um, I got into the driveway and uh, I'll upload a little feed, a little video of what I took in the driveway when I got home. But I shut it off and turned it back on when I got home and the gauges came back, a couple things came back. Um, so then I was like, well shoot, I don't really have time to deal with it right now. I was leaving for the holidays. Uh, so I left for the holidays, I was gone for three days, I came back and my dumbass left the dome light on inside and I completely waxed the battery dead. So then I charged the battery back up, um, let it sit overnight. I haven't load tested it yet, I'm going to do that. Um, I let it set overnight, came back out and it started and it's been probably two weeks since then and it started up every time. But I had to get into it about three days ago and I noticed when I got into it that the lights were acting really weird and everything seemed really dim and odd. So as you will see here in a second, uh, something's going on with my charging system. So I got it in the shop and I'm going to take you guys through my little diagnostic procedure because everything was good. I have an upgraded wiring system, I have upgraded alternator, um, the works, so, and my battery was brand new or was tested good um, here recently. So I'm going to take you guys with me on what I'm going to do to this thing and try and get it back up on the road. Everybody's itching to go back to the snow and I want to get you guys some more footage of the camp trips. So anyway, I'm going to try and get this thing figured out and make it reliable so I can get back on the trail. So anyway, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, take care guys. Talk to you soon. So I just pulled into the driveway, my gauges went dead in Detroit, my airbag light came on, no bus, I have a OBD2 
um, reader for my phone so I tried to read the computer and I couldn't get a signal from the computer so I'm gonna assume that the ECU just went dead on me it did pop back on for like a half a mile and then turn back off but I wasn't gonna shut it off or stop to find out so I'm in the driveway I just pulled in let's see if it'll start again Oh, mileage came back. Oh, gauges came back. I don't know. We'll see. Very weird. Happy holidays, guys. Merry Christmas. Well, I fully charged the battery um last time when i got home because i left the dome lights on and it killed the battery all the way but since then it's been acting really funny so we'll see if it does the same thing here door open no lights no lights still no lights oh she might actually be dead this time let's see if i got any gauges oh i got beeping Dome light still didn't come on. Let's see if she starts. Oh. Alright. We'll get the jump box. Let's see. Jump up. <clears throat> All right, we got the jump box hooked up. Uh, let's go see if she'll do it now. So I did some research and I might have a crank position sensor issue, which is on the back of the bell housing. Um, that sensor is tied into the ECU circuit, which is also tied into the throttle position sensor, um, which is also tied into the neutral safety switch. Now I have been having issues with the neutral safety switch previously um, I haven't had issues recently with it but just a mental note in the back of my head I know that I'm it's part of the circuit so it means it's OBD2 it's gonna try to move the problem around and it's gonna try to adjust itself and figure itself out and run it, it does the, the all the sensors have a have a spectrum and if they run within the spectrum you won't get a check engine light but if they can figure out you know this one goes outside the spectrum say okay we got too much fuel then this one over here can mess with it and this one over here and then they can try to get it all back within spec so it may have been trying to figure itself out I'm not sure I'm gonna go through beings that it didn't start on me and I had to put a jump box on it I'm gonna go through all of my connections I'm gonna go through my ground go through my positives I'm gonna check all of these for corrosion I'm probably gonna re corrosion and treat all of them I might even redo these terminals these marine terminals are good but I've had them on there for at least this whole battery's life and part of the last battery's life and because they're so cheap i you know cheap insurance for me to go ahead and change them out i've had to clean them once so i'm going to check on the condition and i can see there's some corrosion starting on these so i'm going to check those um i might check my throttle position sensors um wire signal because i know um, a long time ago I had to do that before on some diagnostic issues so I can do that real quick there um, I'm also going to redo the um, the engine grounds that are 
right here. You should have two engine grounds. And as you can see, I've already upgraded them. But So I have one for the ECU, and then I have one for the main box and the battery and all that. So I'm going to clean those up and check the ends of them and make sure those are all good. I'm going to do the same up here and there. There's also... Um, there's also another ground underneath the passenger seat in the center rail in the front. So if you pull the carpet lip up, if you get down there and pull the carpet lip up, there's actually a little factory cutout there. You can pull it back and there's a little 10 millimeter nut underneath there. Um, just via research, and I've never had a problem with mine, but via research, that's also another ECU ground. So I'm going to check that too and make sure that that's not all boogered up or maybe it's got snow junk or mud or who knows on it. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do all that, and then uh, I'm going to put the battery charger on the battery, and we'll get the load tester out and load test it. Um, a lot of times you'll take your battery into the place, and they'll test it. They'll test it for 12 volts or 13 volts, and if you know anything about batteries, you'll know that you can have a 12 volt or 13 or 14 volt signal, but the cold cranking amps can be low enough to where it doesn't have enough actual amperage to turn the motor over. So that might be the case with this battery because this battery does look like it's been used um, i taxed it real real hard last time we were in the snow trying to pull a real heavy blazer that was pretty much landlocked in the snow out so yeah i might have an issue there but anyway um i'm going to load test it and make sure that it's got the cold cranking amps that it's supposed to after it's at full charge so i'm going to put the charger on it right now and get all the terminals off while i check that so then when i'm all said and done i'm gonna clean up this engine compartment and then maybe I'll make another video for you guys and go over everything that's in my engine compartment because uh, I've been getting questions and people have been curious about it so if I do end up doing that I'll put a link in the description below so you guys can go right to that and uh, anyway hopefully we see you on the trails check out the Facebook page check out my shop page I do work for you guys if you know you got a fender bender or you got something custom that you can't find somebody else to do I'm not a big shop I don't do a lot of volume but I'm sure willing to help you out if you uh, if you can't find anybody to take you on so Anyway, stay tuned, I'll go through everything. So I got my battery out, and as you can see, I've upgraded all my wiring. Uh, I've got a bigger gauge here. Um, this is my headlight um, harness because I have an HID headlight kit. So I have an upgraded there for the chassis ground. I have an upgrade here that runs down for the engine ground. Um, this is my winch ground, and then just some fog lights and interior light bars and whatever nonsense that I have inside. Um, actually, I think this is an amp wire that runs my 400 watt inverter that's underneath my passenger seat. Um, and then for my power wires, you can see that I've got upgraded there to the box. And then from the box, it goes down and around and comes out over here. back here to this back terminal on the alternator because I have a 160 amp Dodge Durango Dodge Dakota 5.9 liter alternator. Um, it's a significant upgrade from the factory. The factory is 123 I think for mine and the older models, the, <clears throat> the uh, Renex and the first gen HOs are like 93 or 120s. So. so yeah, I'm just gonna loosen up all the grounds and I'm gonna check for connections behind all the grounds. I'm gonna check these right here. And uh, 
uh, go from there because all my wiring should be fine and I have never had an issue with it until this time. So, anyway, here we go. I got my ground wire connections pulled from the engine. As you can see, they're pretty in good shape. I mean, this probably should be a should have been heat shrunk, um, but it doesn't have any corrosion on it. Surprisingly, it's not even really dirty, so it's been fairly protected. But if you look at the actual end, notice there's not much shiny bits on the end of it left either side. So we could be having a connection issue there. Um, same thing down here. Let's see if I can get it on these. This right here. If you pull those off. You can kind of see on those too. That there's not. There's not a lot of good surface on those. So I'm gonna clean those up, and I'm gonna clean those two studs too. I'm gonna wire brush the studs and get all those cleaned up. Um, these are the factory crimped ends, and I don't see. And they still got this factory sealant on the end of it too, so, and I can see the clip right here. It doesn't have any corrosion on it. Same thing on that one, it looks pretty good. So yeah, I'm just going to clean the studs up on that, and then I might, um, I might try to slide a piece of heat shrink onto that other ground and take care of that. But that side looked fine. Um, these are about the same story um, and if you look at my battery when I took the battery out this is the negative terminal and I noticed you can see this right here that's a big bunch of corrosion and there's a big bunch that's still there that's all a big sign corrosion is a sign of bad connection um, or electrolysis is also a sign of bad connection so I'm going to actually go down to the store and just replace these and then if my battery is still good we'll find out here tomorrow morning after it charges if my battery is still good then I can get away with just doing terminals I'll do that um, this one was kind of the same story it, it's okay but I mean it could definitely be cleaned up so and I haven't even got down to this part of it yet so once I bust that off there that might be bad too so <clears throat> if you look at my terminal connections you can kind of see down inside so I can focus for you they're really not in that great a condition they're supposed to be roughed up a little bit to get some um, good bite on the on the post but these are actually pitted. You can see the shiny spot. That's probably the only spot I was getting power through the terminal. So I'm definitely going to replace these. Because I think a set of them are about six bucks. You can get the gold ones and the fancy ones and all that if you want to. But like I said, I've been running this hard, hard, hard for five years. And they were less than ten bucks. So... Don't waste your money, in my opinion. Just get the cheap, throw it on there. Just make sure that they're not the temporaries with the little U-strap over the top of them. Get the marine terminals if your rig is fuel injected. If your rig's carbureted, whatever. Put whatever on there and just make sure that the connections are clean. If you have a fuel injected rig and you see those stupid temporaries on there, go get marine terminals and some eyelets and do this right because you will lose a lot of voltage through this. So, anyway, those are going in the trash. All right, so because I'm curious, I'm going to hook up the load tester just to see where I'm at right this second. This is a proper load tester, and what you'll notice on the load tester is it'll get you know, oh, that's really hard to see, I'm sorry guys. So you got numbers, um, so you got your voltage, 8, 10, 12, 14 volts, and then it'll be in the good. So you'll get 8 or 20 volts, but what you notice is there's a switch down here. And so it'll test the actual amperage of it, and then you'll watch the needle, and the needle, when you hit the switch, will, will go into what category of amperage that this battery condition is in currently. So I'm going to find out exactly where I'm at right now before I even put it on the charger. Whenever you hook up these, make sure you give them a little wiggle just to make sure they get a good connection.
As you can see, I'm in the 12s. It's right in the middle of 12 volts, so I mean, it should, in theory, start. And I'm 10 volts, and I'm on the bottom of the week. And just with that one pull, I went down under 12 volts, so now I'm, you know, 11.8, which is the one pull on the amperage test. I'm going to do one more time. Uh, weak. So we're still weak battery at 12 volts, so I should be able to charge this bad boy up. Um, and then we'll test it again and see where we're at. Do it. Um, if it doesn't, then we'll 
across the next brick. But this is the quickest and easiest thing to do, and more than likely, 90% of the time, it's going to be your terminal or your connection. So, and I've had this problem before with this key. So, um, yeah, we'll check on it in the morning, and we'll see how she goes. Wish you luck. I'm going to do a suspension video walk around here in the near coming future. If I've got enough time, I'll do that um, here in the next couple of days. But um, people have been asking me about that, so I'll give you a little sneaker. Think, uh, think one ton steering, think custom three link, Dodge Dakota running uh, leaf springs, lockers, gears, tires, skid plates. Armor, light. I'll go over the whole good jazz with you guys. I got a lot done to it. It looks like a grocery getter, but from right there down here, the only thing that's left back here is that axle housing and those brake calipers right there. Everything else has been customed. So, anyway. I appreciate you guys being here for the video. I uh, hope I'm doing a better job with the audio quality. I'm working on getting a better camera equipment for you guys, but for now we're just gonna have to kinda kinda live with what we got. But anyway, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. If you could do me a huge favor of hitting the subscribe button if you want to continue to see stuff on my Jeep or the Comanche project we've got going on. I'm gonna run over a video on my camp trailer. I'm gonna do a suspension video on this. And I've got three or four projects coming through the shop. So if you want to keep updated with what I got going on, hit the bell. And that really helped me keep the ball rolling. If you like what I got going on, hit the thumbs up. If you don't, hit the thumbs down. I appreciate you either way. So anyway, thanks for being here. Uh, check out the Facebook community if you guys want to join us sometime. We've got all kinds of group stuff going on. We're going to do a go-kart day here pretty soon. We're going to do a street car event. We're going to go snow camping. We're going to go to Natchez, Washington this summer. Do a big family camp out in Natchez, Washington. Um, we're probably going to do some autocross events. I am going to register for the driving line school for um, track day events as soon as that opens up. So anyway, check us out. Check out my shop page. Check out our crew community page. We've got all stuff, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, anyway, thanks for being here. I appreciate everybody. Talk to you soon. All right, good morning guys. So here we are the next morning. Uh, sorry, I got the heater on. It's a little loud. Um, so battery charger sat overnight and. It's showing a charge rate of zero amps per hour, which tells me that the battery charger thinks the battery is fully charged. So we're gonna go ahead and unplug it. <clears throat> and we'll get the load tester on it. and a half volts and we are up looks like well over 800 cold cranking amps so we're gonna hit this and hit the switch and we'll see where we go hold on so we're at about 600 cold cranking amps so battery's fully charged we do have 13 volts but when we hit the load test we end up with 600 maybe 620 cold cranking amps and right now it is fifty degrees in the shop so we are at least two hundred cold cranking amps below recommended on the battery below what the battery was when it was new so this battery definitely is on its way out um, there's nearly nothing I can do about it I'm 600 cold cranking amps is enough to start a 4 liter.
terminals on. Uh, I checked all my connections. I redid some of the ends. Um, I found some massive nasty corrosion in my winch wiring, so I'm going to have to replace my winch wiring, which won't affect the drivability issues that I got going on. So I know I'm a little bit low on cold cranking amps on the battery, but we should be able to start the rig and. Um, my connections are all known to be good now. I went through everything, and so let's let's stick some keys in her and see what she does. Charge looks good. I got all my gauges. success I'm gonna uh, put my code reader back on the uh, engine and clear all the codes out it doesn't show any check engine codes but it does have a couple stored so I'm gonna clear those out and then we'll go for a drive and hopefully she's good to go um, seems real promising I found a couple of issues I didn't like with uh, the inside of it, so I'll see what I gotta do to that. I had water pouring out of my rear speakers in my headliner last night, so I'm gonna figure out where my water leak is and I'm gonna go from there. But I'm gonna call the battery and charging system mission success. We'll go take her for a drive and see what she does. But anyway, thanks for being here, guys. I appreciate you watching, and hopefully, this helps you out. And anyway, if you could uh, hit the subscribe button for me and give me a like or uh, hit the bell, whatever you want to do, I really appreciate you guys being here and taking a look. Uh, anyway. Talk to you soon. Take care.